So, can you guess who I'm going to talk about today? There's only one person I know named Keanu. Keanu Reeves. And I'm using my daughter's uh, fancy animations. Oh. So, I want to talk about... Uh, I'm going to have a tea serana today for Keanu Reeves. So, and if he sees this on YouTube, I'm hoping he'll come. And he'll come. <laughs> so, I've been watching Keanu Reeves for a really long time. I'm really impressed with him. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit. He's very hesitant to say publicly that he's Buddhist. And there might be a couple reasons for that. Uh, one might be uh, a distrust or uh, a little bit of caution about organized religion. Not wanting to be part of an organized religion is sometimes uh, a put off. Uh, also, uh, he may not want to become the official Hollywood de facto representative of Buddhism in America like Richard Gere. So he doesn't self identify as Buddhist, but he talks about Buddhism all the time. In every interview, he talks about the Buddha and suffering and the Four Noble Truths, but I'm not Buddhist. And remember, I told you what my dad said he, if you walk like a duck, and you act like a duck, and you quack like a duck, oh, you're a duck. <laughs> so, you know, if you go to yoga class all the time, and you tell people you're, you're, not, you don't really, you're not really a yogi, I mean, Linda calls everyone that goes to a yoga class a yogi, because you're practicing yoga, and that's what a yogi is. So I wanted to give you some background on his, I don't want my talks to be about movies he gave 40 years ago, so uh, he just did this movie on Netflix called The Destination Wedding with Winona Ryder, it's good. It's appropriate. Uh, this movie is not appropriate. Uh, my son told me, uh, he told me this is a really good movie. It's John Wick. There's part one, part two, part three. Uh, he said it's really good, but he told me I shouldn't watch it. He said you won't like it. It's too violent. So this movie's probably too violent. But the interesting thing about this story, I'd like to watch it, but I could probably never use it in a service, but supposedly in John Wick 1, uh, a bad guy uh, hurts his dog, and that kind of sets him off on this uh, vigilante quest. So there's like spiritual underpinnings even to John Wick. And I think John, uh, John Wick 3 just came out. And then this was a really good movie on uh, Netflix. It's called I'll Always Be My Maybe. So... Uh, these two in the middle are really good comedians. They are best friends, and they're always kind of, um, they're really in love, but they don't know it. And they spend the whole movie looking around for something that's right there with them all the time. And this supposedly is one of the first major movie motion pictures, like uh, um, that Asian, what was that movie? Rich? Yeah. So this is one of the first films that have like an Asian romantic li leads. And so... That, that's very important. Uh, Keanu Reeves was in this movie, and he played himself, and he was kind of a jerky uh, Hollywood actor, but he did a really good job. I think he was playing off type, but that just shows what a great actor he is. And then uh, I got this for the kids. Uh, do you know who this is? Duke Kaboom. <laughs> Kaboom. I looked this up on the internet because I couldn't remember his name, but he voiced... Duke Kaboom in Toy Story 4. So now we're all on the same page. We're going to move forward. So uh, Keanu Reeves doesn't talk about this very much, and it's very hard to find this on the internet. Uh, I had to search and search and search. Um, he's had a lot of tragedy in his life. You know, even though he's rich and he's famous, and you'd think he'd be, you know, completely satisfied, he's had to deal with a lot of tragedies. So one of them was, uh, at a very young age, uh, his father walked out on his family. And so that was a major, major difficulty for him uh, in his young, early days. And then uh, River Phoenix uh, was his best friend. And uh, River Phoenix tragically died of a drug overdose. So that was another you know, major uh, shock to him. And then this one's really sad. Uh, he met a woman that he fell in love with instantly. Uh, she, uh, they were going to have a child together. Uh, the baby died. And 
uh, a couple, like within six months or a year later, uh, his girlfriend died. And this is just like three things out of five or six. So there's been a lot of tragedies in his life. So, you know, this is like a normal life. This is what happens to people. This is part of reality for human beings, whether you're rich or famous or uh, uh, an average uh, working man. So uh, the thing that I found interesting about him is the choices of his films. Uh, so this is a scene from Little Buddha. And uh, I, I like the way they shot this. Uh, Keanu Reeves is the Buddha. Uh, this is at 35 when he's about to realize awakening under the Bodhi tree. And you're kind of like, well, why is there two of them? Uh, the one on the left is a little taller. So he's the real Buddha. The one on the right is his ego, is his ego. And his ego is telling him, wow, you're a god now. You know, I, can I worship you as a god? So he was appealing to his religious ego. Like he wanted to, he was still trying to get him to uh, lose his way and, and of no self and no ego. And so uh, the Buddha on the left, he says, uh, you know, I know who you are. He calls him the architect. So the, the ego is always building and architecting and designing uh, delusions and illusions for us, for us to lose our focus. And so he kind of calls him out, and this is when he realizes awakening. Architect, finally I have met you. You will not rebuild your house again, but I am your house, and you live in me. O oh Lord of my own ego, you are pure illusion. You do not exist. The earth is my witness. So remember, I, I, uh, I used some of these clips for the uh, younger uh, Meta Padma class I told you about before. Uh, a little too scary. It wasn't age appropriate. I clipped this way down because the ego is kind of scary in this scene. And then you saw him put his hand to the ground. We've talked about that. That's that mudra of uh, earth witness. So if you have a statue at home where the Buddha is putting his hand down on the earth, uh, this is the moment of his awakening. So he sees his ego. He sees it as the architect. He's not going to go on an ego trip about being some deep, profound, spiritual god. And he says the ego is just an illusion. It's not real. And then he realizes awakening. So a coincidence that Keanu Reeves played the Buddha in a little Buddha movie? I don't think so. So uh, then next, I've shown you this one before. Do uh, you know what movie this is? This is The Matrix. I know this is a while ago. This is the greatest movie. The Matrix 1 is the best movie I've ever seen. Again, my son told me, we've got to watch The Matrix. And I said, no, it's too violent. And I watched it, and I, I just was blown away. It's the greatest movie I've ever seen. And uh, what's interesting is the person that's in charge of The Matrix, The Matrix is this virtual reality. Like, it's kind of a metaphor for Buddhism that we create a reality that we live in. That, that kind of confirms our beliefs and our ideas and pats us on the back. And it's called the matrix. And that person that's maintaining the matrix, again, is called the architect. And Neo, he's called Neo because he's the one. He's the one that's going to see truth. And then he finds a teacher named Morpheus, which means to change. And this is the scene where he's going to offer him the red pill or the blue pill. And so Buddhism does this a lot, too. Buddhism only offers us the truth. It's not really offering us happiness, per se. So living a truthful life will lead to happiness, but you sometimes have to see harsh reality clearly to live an authentic life. And he says to Neo, you could take the red pill, and uh, you can stay with me, and I'll, see, I'll show you how deep the rabbit hole goes, or you take the blue pill, and you can go, go home and, and, and architect whatever reality you would like.
Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. It gets scary after that. So then, uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is uh, John Wick 2 came out, and uh, he went on a lot of interviews. He really isn't on, uh, he's not on People Magazine very much. He's not on, uh, like, what is it, Access Hollywood or Entertainment Tonight. Uh, he's very, very private. And the only time I really hear him speak much is when he's promoting a film. So this was for John Wick, too. It's kind of a long interview, but somehow he always comes back to talking about Buddhism, suffering, uh, practicing. And it, it's, almost, uh, it's almost like he, he brings up this. He brings it up. And so he talks here about how he used to be very angry and frustrated, and uh, he's, he's much calmer now. Uh, he's much happier. He's been able to transcend the tragedies in his life and find meaning. Um, I, I'm really impressed with him. Uh, we're going to look at it in adult study, but he went on uh, Stephen Colbert's show in May, and I'm not going to give away my, I don't want to uh, give away the, the punchline, but he goes on Stephen Colbert, and they're goofing around, and he's trying to joke with them, and suddenly Stephen Colbert says something like really profound, and the whole audience is stunned, and it went up on YouTube and became a meme. So, you know, he's not screwing around, right? He, he's very authentic, and he's very serious about life. Um, so I wanted to show this to you. Yeah, because you're thinking about relationships and you're thinking about people and, and there's definitely been like, you know, when I worked on Little Buddha and got introduced to Buddhism, I'm not a Buddhist, but, you know, to, to start to think about in those ways and to think about impermanence and, you know, uh, and mortality and, you know, um, yeah, that definitely changed my life. So there have been instances in, in the work kind of informing my life. Mm -hmm. Would you say... Uh Acting is a profession where you definitely need to grow a thick skin in order to survive? Um, I think it helps, you know, since we're talking about Buddhism, suffering. Uh, yeah, a little, if you can't, you know, meditate, then maybe a thick skin would be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what would you say is the biggest, the biggest misconception people have about Keanu Reeves? Uh, that I'm sad all the time. <laughs> I think that's over. That's, that's already over. Yeah, but you know. So it's really interesting. She asks him, like, what's the number one thing that you've learned about being an actor? And he brings up Buddhism, right? <laughs> and then she asks him, like, you know, how does he, how does he prepare? Uh, how does he approach his art? And suddenly he says, well, since we're talking about Buddhism, it, they weren't talking about Buddhism. <laughs> At all. There's nothing in here. She wants to know about the movie, and the producers of the movie want him to talk about the movie. But he keeps, he keeps interjecting his spiritual practice. And I thought that was really profound. He said, if you're going to work as an actor, you either develop a really thin skin, or you learn how to meditate, and how to be aware, and how to be mindful. And so that's the same thing in life, right? There's two paths. You can either take uh, the blue pill, and to de develop a very thick skin and have an architect that creates reality for you and struggle and suffer, or you learn how to be aware and mindful and you learn how to say Namo Amidabutsu and you practice the way and you take the red pill and you're calm and you're happy and you're no longer the sad and angry Keanu. So, you know, you look at the events in his life and you would think he would be very sad 
and he's had a lot of tragedy in his life. So I would like to say that Keanu Reeves isn't as tragic as we think, but he's deeper than we think. And there was a quote in that uh, millennial documentary I told you about on Netflix, where they, uh, they were interviewing somebody about a minimalism, about living with less. And they quoted uh, Jim Carrey. And he said, Jim Carrey said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that it's not the answer. And immediately everybody said, well, that's easy for Jim Carrey to say, right? He's an elitist, he's a millionaire. Of course, he, it's easy for him to say. But the comeback was, is of course, he's the only one who could say it, right? I can't say that because I've been driving around and, and every time we see a car, he goes, oh, there's a Maserati, there's a Lamborghini, there's a McLaurin. Uh, I, I've never experienced what it's like to live, to have a private jet, uh, you know, um, live in a mansion, have multiple homes. Um, I wish I could wear a brand new white t-shirt every morning. I told Linda if I was rich, I would just have new t-shirts and I would wear them once and then no laundry. I, I'm wearing a brand new t-shirt today. <laughs> It's so cool to just take it out, brand new, put it on. Uh, but what Jim Carrey's telling us and what Keanu Reeves is telling us is being rich and famous and having all the money you could ever want is not enough. It doesn't make you happy. You have to trust them, right? They lived it, they know. I, I dream that it would make my life happy, but they're saying, no, it doesn't. Practicing Buddhism, seeing the truth, uh, being grounded in your life, Living a life that's authentic for you is what makes one truly happy and no longer angry. And then you have no need for a thick skin because you're open and you're, you're uh, immersed and intimate with everyone around you. And this is how you become uh, truly happy. So please join me in God. Namo Amidabu. Namo Amidabu. Thank you.